Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Kai and today we have a quick and easy tutorial for you in Photoshop, helping you color grade your raw images so that they really stand out and pop. So let's jump to it. So as mentioned in the intro, we will be editing raw photos. And if you don't know what raw photos are, they're basically uncompressed images that your camera creates. And you might need to set your camera up to take raw images. And I'll very quickly show you how to do this with a Canon menu system. So we are going to show you the menu for the popular Canon M50 camera. If you hit the menu, go to image quality and then go to either raw or you can select C raw. And also you can select a JPEG image as well. So every time you take a photo, you'll get a raw image as well as a JPEG image. So with those raw images, let's jump into Photoshop to see how we can start editing them. I have a number of photos already up on my computer here. And as you can see, there are a pair of images for each image taken. And that's because I set my camera up to take a raw image and a JPEG at the same time. Now, if we go to details here, you will see that each one is a JPEG and CR3. Now, CR3 is actually a compressed version of RAW. I know I just said that RAW is uncompressed, but this is a slightly compressed version to help you save space on your SD card. And if I click on that file and then go to extra large icons, you can see that this is our RAW CR3. Now, all I have to do is right click on that and I'm going to open this with Adobe Photoshop 2022. And it immediately opens it up in Camera RAW 14.0.1. And this is where we're going to do a lot of our corrections. We have a raw image, so it's looking quite flat. But thankfully, because it's raw, we can pull out a lot of the color in this image. And the first thing I notice straight away is the top here is really white, but we've lost a lot of detail in that. So what we can do is pull the highlights right back. And as I do that, you will notice that I start to see the detail in the white of the top. In fact, I can pull that all the way down. Now, in order to compensate for that, what I can do is lift our shadows slightly. Uh, maybe even lift our whites and even lift the blacks or if I want a more contrasted image I can pull the blacks down. What I want to do next is start to play with some of the texture here. If we play around with the texture slightly we can sharpen the eyes and also we can add a little bit of clarity not too much. We can also increase the dehaze slightly. We can really punch the color so we go to vibrance and as I pull on Vibrance, you will notice that the greens really start to pop and the pink around our model starts to pop as well. Now, the difference between Vibrance and Saturation is Saturation often affects the skin tones, as you can see here. But certainly Vibrance, we can punch that more before it starts to affect our skin tones. Now, what I really want to see is the greens pop out. So I can go to Color Mixer. And you'll notice that I have hue, saturation and luminance. And I can actually push the green so that they really are more pronounced in the background. And also the reds in our flowers. If I pull this slightly, you will notice that our model's lips start to go quite red. So we have to be careful not to punch it too much, but just a little bit. I wouldn't recommend using orange because that will adversely affect our skin tone. So we'll leave that alone. With yellow, we can actually create more of an orange look in the background. And the blues will start to affect our white here. There's slight blue tints in there. So we might not play around with that too much. What I might do with the purples is punch them slightly, as well as the magentas. Again, affecting these blossoms in our background. So I'm looking at this and thinking it's not too bad. It's looking okay. One more thing I will add is if you wanted to maybe not pronounce the green so much maybe you wanted them to look more orange then you can pull the greens back like that so there's definitely there's definitely two tones set in this photo and at this stage what I want to do is open my photo in Photoshop and with my photo open now there are a few things that I want to do to correct this image and the first thing is I really want to brighten the eyes of my model so if I go to the background I right click on it and go to duplicate layer I'll go to OK now all the changes I make will be done to this layer and not to our original background what you can do is come over here to the dodge tool and the dodge tool lightens areas in your image if you click on that and then come up to the properties you can increase the size slightly maybe that's too much maybe to about 30 pixels 40 pixels and take the hardness down to zero 
And now if we zoom into our image, we can hit Alt and scroll in with the scroll wheel right into our model's eyes, we can start to paint onto the eyes. And it's not immediately recognizable, but you can start to see that I'm lifting the color in those eyes because we really want those to punch on our photo. If I zoom out of the image, you can see that our model's eyes are really brightened up and I can show you the difference by turning off the adjustment layer that we've put on or the adjusted layer that we've put on and then turning it back on. And there we've just brought a little bit of life back into the eyes. If you've added too much, you can always correct by changing the opacity of that layer down by a certain percentage so that it's not too powerful. So that's the first image that we have corrected. And you can see if we just put them side by side, the original image and also our corrected image. And this is a great place to mention that if you haven't done so already, don't forget to add yourself to the Kai Creative Facebook and Instagram feeds where you can stay up to date with all of our photography sessions, video productions, short films, camera reviews and other creative happenings. So for the second image, I want to show you how you can really pull out the colours in the background of your images, particularly if you're shooting in an environment like a city. So we have another picture of our model here. This is the JPEG image. And as you can see, it's looking quite neutral. Hey, who's that? There's a guy up here watching our photo shoot cheeky but as you can see it's quite neutral and again this is our fitness model this is emily from it's a petite life i'll leave a link to her instagram down below she's an amazing personal trainer but what i want to show you on this picture is how we can really punch the blues in the glass that we have here and in order to do that we're going to right click on our cr3 image we're going to open with and we're going to open in adobe photoshop 22 and again we come up in camera raw and this is where we're going to do the majority of our color correction so first of all again if i drag the highlights down you can see we get a little bit more definition in our clouds in fact if i pull the whites down you will see a little bit more the difference in the clouds i will also pull the blacks down to contrast the image slightly and maybe punch the exposure up to about 0.3. What we want to do now is again, add in a little bit of texture because of these textured walls. I wanna see more of that in the brickwork. Uh, Dehaze slightly and a slight amount of clarity just to give some sharpness to these bricks. Right, so now punching up our vibrance again, you should start to see the blue appear in the glass reflecting the blue sky. If we go to our color mixer, we have our hue and this is where we want to pull our aquas down and our blues back. And you can start to see the blues really being defined in the background. If I go to saturation now and punch the blues, I get even more blue. It doesn't look completely natural, but I like the contrasting blue with the orange brickwork here and also we can do that for our aquas if we go to the luminance and we push the blues back or forwards we can actually get more definition in the sky as well perhaps with our aquas even more definition so at this point i want to open my image so what i want to do now is exactly the same thing i did before which is duplicate the layer okay and i'm going to go back to my dodge tool over here and just brighten up a part of our model's face like so so it stands out a little bit more and if i turn that off you can see it's not that pronounced but it does make a difference when you see it turned on and off like that and also what we could do is the rest of the skin tone, maybe just on one side, so not too much, but just to give the idea that there's more light lighting up the skin. And again, if I turn that off and on, you can see it just makes her face punch a little more in our scene. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of those two photos.
So that's our quick tutorial in Photoshop helping you to color grade your raw photos and really make them punch for social media or wherever you want to display them. If you found today's video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell for notifications as well. As I've mentioned in previous videos, we are making a library of Photoshop, Premiere Pro and After Effects videos to help you not just to know the technical side of cameras, but also what you can do with the photos and videos that you produce. But saying that, we do have a long list of camera reviews coming up in 2022 so again stay tuned for that so that's it from me today guys thank you so much for watching all that i've got left to say is stay creative stay safe imagine implement and inspire and i will see you next time on kai creative